this life was a bunch of mishaps and misturns and, and mistakes. And this book is, it's supposed to be funny because I don't really like books that are about history that, you know, they're not, I don't like books that are, that are just that are depressing. Um, and uh, John Brown was a really interesting man. He was, and what I liked about him, this book ultimately is a book about faith. Because John Brown's faith really, he was a man of profound, profoundly deep religious belief, particularly in the Old Testament. And he was morally, and he felt that slavery was morally wrong, and, uh, and he decided to do something about it. I mean, it's just, it would be like, you know, like if I go outside and steal your BMW because I don't like global warming, I'll say, take your car because it's contributing to global warming. I, mean, I suppose, in the grand scheme of things, I'm right, you know. After you kill me, you can just... <laughs> but um, he felt that God had spoken to him and told him that he must conduct this war against this morally wrong institution. And he felt that those who were involved in the institution, the, the, the blacks who were uh, victims of the institution and whites who participated in it, uh, should, should change. And he forced that change on them. He tried to force that change on folks. And so the book basically takes you through his journey from Kansas um, to, uh, to the east. That it, in the middle section of the book, Onion is kidnapped by some slave, um, some slavers, some cowboys, basically, and he becomes a slave for a while in a tavern to get a kind of look of you know how slavery worked in the Wild West, and then John Brown comes back, rescues him, and then the book is just a long, just it's just a slide all the way to the end. It's just straight down. It's just the groove. The the last section of the book is just really you know because you you know what's going to happen, but you don't. Most people have an idea of what went on in Harper's Ferry. Hopefully after they read this book, they have a better idea, and then hopefully they'll be inspired to go to the history books and find out what really happened. Although I try to stick as close to the facts as possible. There was certain areas where I couldn't I stick to the, you know, to the actual facts. But um, um, that's it. Um, you know, my, my entire career as a writer is, is, has always been dedicated to the knowledge that we are really a lot more like than we are different. And um, slavery, we were all, America is only, I suppose with the election of Barack Obama, it has helped Americans realize that race is a problem that we all have. And during slavery, we were all really victims of slavery. Um, and one does one of the things that John Brown really realized, realized when he was in his crusade. And so um, this book isn't like one of these books that says, you know, take your medicine, white people, you know, eat it, you know, it's just, it's just a, a raw look at how things were. There's some slaves who weren't nice, and some who were, you know, great and courageous, and some white folks who were great, and, and some who were not, who were not so great. Um, I think relations between blacks and whites during slavery is often misunderstood in the literary world. Um, well, I can't say often misunderstood. I, I just think that they're often misunderstood, uh, and particularly here in the South. And I don't profess to be a, you know, an expert in that, but um, one of the things that this book tries to sort of dissect is, that, is to see that the fallacy of human beings who are trapped within, the, 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 the actions of human beings who are trapped within a system that just allows them to be a certain way, and the ways they try to wiggle out of it, the way they try to maneuver around some of the societal boundaries that exist. Um, so um, that's that's pretty much it. And, and now I'll open the floor to questions because yeah, I'm sure you have more than one or two. Yes, sir.